I don't normally make list videos featuring SUVs, but while I was looking through the comments section of part one and part two of luxury cheap cars, I noticed that a lot of you guys were requesting the same thing. So here it is. And just like the last two videos, I decided to keep the vehicles fairly modern. None of them are older than 2015. I really do hope you guys enjoy this one. The first SUV on the list is the Range Rover Evoque Pure. The words Range Rover normally speak expensive, upper class, rapper, NBA player, you know, something along those lines. Which is why the Evoque Pure has an easy time of fooling people into thinking that it's more expensive than what it really is. You see, Land Rover sells a few variations of the Range Rover, the Evoque Pure being the least expensive one out of the bunch, followed by the Velar, Sport, and lastly, the one most of us are familiar with, the Range Rover. The Evoque Pure has a much different purpose as you normally would imagine coming from a Range Rover. The ride is stiff, the interior materials are eh, and the cargo space is on par with a Volkswagen Golf hatchback. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. This compact crossover is just for a totally different demographic. Where this vehicle really shines is in the driving experience, whether you're going on a spirited drive or going off road. The Evoque is easy to maneuver, it's super responsive and precise around turns, and thanks to its terrain responsive system, the vehicle can automatically adjust to pretty much any surface or situation. I can happily say I speak from personal experience. I get to drive one for two full days before and it was quite the shocker comparing it to the Range Rover the ride quality and the Evoque Pure definitely isn't as comfortable or quiet but I honestly enjoyed the sporty attributes and for one third of the price you really can't complain exterior wise the Evoque Pure looks nice I mean it looks like a Range Rover but obviously on a much smaller scale the interior is laid out nicely cargo space is measured at 20.3 cubic feet the rear seats are somewhat compromised because of the sporty exterior and headroom and legroom is tight especially in the two-door variation Variation. That's right, you can get this crossover in a two-door as well. Remember I said this vehicle was good for off-roading? Well, that's because it comes equipped with an all-wheel drive system and has a ground clearance of 8.3 inches. Performance-wise, the Evoque Pure comes equipped with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 240 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. Doesn't sound like much, but I'll tell you from driving it, it has a kick. Turbo lag is kept down to an unnoticeable minimum and the low-end torque kicks in relatively quick. If you can get past the questionable history of poor reliability Range Rovers are normally known for, then the Range Rover Evoque is a sweet little SUV. You can find them used for as low as $15,000. The second SUV on the list is the Cadillac XT5. Moving on to a more capable SUV as far as passenger space is concerned. I mean, that's why people buy these types of vehicles, right? Or not. The X-T5 is a successor to Cadillac's most popular model, the SRX. Essentially, they took the winning formula of their mid-sized SUV and attempted to build on it with the X-T5. I gotta say this, I might be in the minority here, but the design of the X-T5 looks really good. The angles, the lines, the headlights with the vertical daytime running lights, and most importantly, their very familiar grille that makes this vehicle look expensive. Design-wise, I've always been a big fan of modern Cadillac cars. They continue to carry traditional design cues, and they are one of the few companies that hasn't changed dramatically over the years. Whether it's an older Cadillac or a new one, you can tell it's a Cadillac. You can't say that for other auto brands. The inside looks modern. In fact, when the X-T5 first released as a 2017 model year, many said its interior looked like it was ahead of its time. It comes with a massive panoramic roof, a nicely laid out in-dash infotainment display, and quality materials such as suede, leather, wood, aluminum, and if equipped, carbon fiber. The only cheap hard plastic panel you can find is placed below the knee level, you know, the non-visible parts of the interior. The infotainment display, which has been known as one of Cadillac's biggest weak points, is said to be much better and improved, with less less lag, less glitches, and less freeze-ups, but I'd take that with a grain of salt. Buttons for the infotainment system are very minimal, essentially most controls will be touchscreen or through gestures and voice. The damn volume control is a touchscreen slider. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Functions such as the volume knob do not need to be reinvented. Touch functions, voice, and gestures never seem to be reliable, especially when you need them to be. Okay, rant over. The electronic shifter frees up room for other personal items such as a tablet or a small purse. And cargo room is decent at 30 cubic feet of space with the rear seats up and 63 cubic feet with the seats down. For those of you that are not a fan of turbocharged engines because you know, <coughs> Scotty, You'll be happy to know that the X-T5 comes equipped with a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that produces 310 horsepower and 271 pound-feet of torque. The numbers aren't anything groundbreaking, but it's more than adequate. If you're in the market for an X-T5, you can find them for as low as $16,000. 
the third SUV on the list is the BMW X1. This is BMW's smallest and quote, most affordable utility vehicle. I quote the words affordable because yes, for a new BMW, the starting price of $35,000 doesn't sound that bad. That is until you realize it comes naked in standard features. You really have to pay to play with this one. Things like lane departure assist, front collision warning, and adaptive cruise control are extra. Those are features you find standard on other more affordable competitor cars. But here's a good thing, getting one used not only saves you the massive depreciation that happens in the first few years of buying one new, but you'll most likely end up with all the technology add-ons for no additional money. Hey. This generation of the X1 pretty much improved across the board compared to the version that came before. People wanted more cargo room, well, you got it. In fact, it has class leading room at 27.1 cubic feet. It offers more room than both the Audi Q3 and the Mercedes GLA. People also wanted more room for passengers with a better seating position, well, they got it. And people also wanted a modern interior, and well, by the looks of it, they got it as well. But the one thing none of us really wanted was ditching the rear wheel drive system for a front wheel drive platform used on a Mini Cooper. Definitely not what we wanted. Luckily for us in the United States, we at least get an all-wheel drive system that only spins the front wheels if it detects slippage, unlike other countries that actually get a front-wheel drive X1. Ugh, a front-wheel drive BMW. That small change alone changes the driving mechanics of what once was a very fun compact crossover to drive. Interior-wise, it looks like pretty much every other BMW, nice and sleek with nice materials. And oh yeah, they decided to keep the buttons. Easy to reach, easy to use, and super functional. The iDrive system is as simple as it gets, with the controls to control the infotainment right on the center console. That said, I'm not a huge fan of the tablet style screen placed on the top of the dash, but hey, it is what it is. Crazy thing is that other manufacturers are using the very similar tablet style screen as well, and honestly, that trend needs to end. It's lazy and it's cheap looking. The turbo four cylinder engine equipped produces 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, and the best part is that it returns pretty good gas mileage, 22 miles per gallon city and 32 miles per gallon and highway making this a great daily driver. You can find them for as low as $13,000 and since it's a modern BMW most people will think you pay double and even triple that price. The fourth SUV on the list is the Jaguar F-Pace. Okay, so this choice I wouldn't say is cheap, but more so affordable. The reason I decided to include it is because it looks much more expensive than what you can pay for one used. In just a couple of years, this SUV has lost more than 50% of its value. That's not good news for the original owners that purchased this vehicle new, but for those buying secondhand, it's one hell of a bargain. The exterior alone is so worth the money, it looks sporty, futuristic, and classy all at the same time. This is an SUV that has massive curb appeal and is guaranteed to catch the attention of anybody around its perimeter. It also has performance to go along with the great looks. A buddy of mine rented one from Toro a few months ago and drove it like a damn sports car. And as a shocker, the F-Pace handled everything like a champ. It was super impressive, especially this being Jaguar's first production SUV in their history. It first entered the market in 2017 in an attempt to jump into the huge SUV craze and it was perfect timing. Looks good, drives well, and excels in the practicality department. You get 33.5 cubic feet of space in the cargo with the seats up and 63 cubic feet of space with the seats down. And what surprises people the most is the amount the F-Pace can tow, up to 5,200 pounds. To put that into perspective, it tows more than a Toyota Tacoma. This is a vehicle that puts as much emphasis on sportiness as it does practicality. The interior looks great as well. The gauge cluster features a 12.3 inch screen instead of traditional gauges, making it fully customized whether you want to see a full screen of gauges or a full screen of navigation, you got the choice. The massive panoramic roof is beautiful and is among the largest in its class. Okay, so I haven't really said anything negative about the F-Pace yet, so let me point out something that I kind of don't like. The rear sort of looks like a Mazda CX-5. Well, kind of. Not that I dislike the CX-5, but more so the similarities make it look less expensive from the rear. And second negative is, since it's a Jaguar, poor reliability in the long run can be a concern. Engine wise, it's also not a disappointment. It comes equipped with a supercharged V6 that produces 340 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque for the lower trim. Also, the sound the engine produces through the exhaust pipes is pretty sweet. If 
you're looking for a family vehicle that has very little in compromises, then this may be the right SUV for you. You can find them for as low as $20,000. The fifth and final SUV is the Lincoln MKT. It is only right that I include one SUV that features a third role for larger families. And not only will you be able to fit your entire family in the MKT, but you'll all be riding in style. It looks like an executive type of vehicle. Driving down the road, bystanders would probably think a celebrity is being chauffeured. It looks stylish too, thanks to the dramatic roof line, something not always found on three row SUVs. The negative to that is that the headroom is a bit compromised in the third row and the cargo space suffers as well. The front grille is not so appealing, at least not for me. I'm actually glad the modern Lincoln vehicles ditched the butterfly style grille in favor for the ones used on the Continental. Some people may not like the large crossover wagon look of the MKT, but there is no denying that it looks pretty expensive. Buying one used also guarantees you all the premium features as many of them come standard new. Things like power lift gate, backup sensors, power adjustable pedals, leather seats, heated and ventilated seats come standard. Some even come with a second row of captain chairs to make that ride much more luxurious. Just keep in mind that the MKT equipped with the captain chairs limits the amount of seats to 6 instead of 7. The gauge cluster has one main single dial for speed, flanked by configurable screens with the option of displaying different features. Oh yeah, and if equipped, the MKT comes with the fridge. A freaking fridge. Cargo space, like I said earlier, is a little weak, one, because of the third row, and two, because of the roof line. You only get 17.9 cubic feet of space with the seat up, which has a hard time accommodating tall items, but when the seats are down, you get a whopping 76 cubic feet of space. The driving experience is what you expect from an executive looking vehicle, a plush, comfortable ride for both the driver and passengers, and the fantastic insulation makes everything quiet inside. When it comes to the power plant, it comes equipped with a 3.7 liter V6 that produces 303 horsepower and 200. 78 pound feet of torque and you may even be able to find the ecoboost version one for cheap as well a turbocharged 3.5 liter v6 that produces 365 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque you can find the mk used for as low as eleven thousand dollars so what do you think did you like the list if you did show me some love and hit that like button that way we can ensure this video gets suggested to other people as well if you haven't already make sure to subscribe and as always thanks for watching till next time